that's not supposed to be like that. So we got ourselves a new to us trailer and we filled the water tank. When we turned on the pump, we started just having water coming out here. And turns out that the fitting that was attached here to the top side of the water heater, that's the hot water coming out, had cracked off. So in, re in going to replace that, I realized that there was several other things wrong. Hi. Say hi. And then I noticed that this cover was bulging. And guess what? That's not supposed to be like that. So today we are replacing a water heater in a camper trailer. This is a six gallon tank and we're replacing it with a six gallon propane. Uh, our replacement we found locally, but it was $640. Not cheap, but this is why you properly winterize. This is what it looks like when a unit freezes with water in it. Make sure you follow your directions for proper winterizing of your trailer so that this doesn't happen. Now I just gotta get that thing pulled out, get the new one put in, and I'm gonna show you how this process goes. I've never done this before, so this is true DIY. I kind of figure it out as I go. I hope I have enough PEX fittings and whatnot. You do need a crimper to put on PEX uh, fittings. So, but I'll show you all that and let's see how easy this is or hard this is to replace. I think it comes out this direction when I get everything disconnected, but we're gonna find out. Uh, you have to use a square tipped bit. Of course, just look at the screws that are holding it in, but a square tipped bit to remove all the screws and there's like 20 of them or something, but I'll set you up and let's get this thing out of here. So lucky guess, there was actually 20 in the ring around the outside, but then there was one down through the corner here, one down through the corner there, 22. Not bad for a guess. So in a project like this, make sure you follow safety first rules. We gotta turn off the propane so we don't have any source of gas going to the existing water heater. Don't smoke when you're doing this and make sure that there's fresh air. Don't do dumb stuff, do the right thing, be smart. I'm gonna turn off the propane, let it uh, air out as I disconnect, that sort of thing, and we'll get the old water heater out of the unit. Propane's turned off at the source turn both knobs clockwise to turn them off, make sure they're tight. Next step is to remove the gas line from in here. So disconnect that, pull it back through so that it's out of the unit itself and then we should be able to just slide this out. Previous owner put silicone around this thing like big time so I had to use kind of a, a painter's tool, putty knife, whatever to kind of just score it tear it apart piece by piece till it came out and then I just push the gasket through the hole so now it'll go back inside the trailer out of the way so that this whole unit can come out and then I'm taking the same tool and just breaking the seal all the way around it and you can see that it's essentially loose and will just come out so I'll put you on a tripod so you can see the process of that whole thing coming out of the trailer. So I came back inside the trailer to make sure that everything was just disconnected so I could just pull it out without any issues. But it looks like the power source that comes in here um, comes from the top down and then out in this way. And then these all go down through to the front side where they connect to all the connectors on off, whatever. So. I'm gonna need to cut those before I can pull it out 
but I'm just going to snip each one, clip, 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 and then we'll go to the outside and pull this out. Okay, so I got those cut. Um, one little clue, or tip I should say. I snip it on the water heater side so that I know which colors were connected to what. I have the manual for this. The previous owner kept the manual with all of the info for the trailer, so I have that to use as reference. So that if I need to, uh, I can look at that to see what these different colors are supposed to be that go down into the water here. So don't make things harder on yourself. Keep little things like that attached so that you have clues for putting things back together. Let's go pull it out. So the caulking that I'm using is DAP Dynaflex Ultra. Uh, it's an advanced exterior sealant for windows, doors, siding, trim. So it sticks to aluminum, metal, all the, all the things. So this should be good. Uh, the only color that I happen to have without going to the store is a light gray. Very first thing is stick the water heater in the hole and then we'll apply the caulking. Screw! So I totally lucked out. The wires that are coming out of the new water heater are exactly the same color, same configuration as the one that came out. So red will go to brown just like it was. Strip, Cut this, strip it back a little bit, and then connect those together. And I'll just do these one at a time until I get them all buttoned up. The connector that I'm using is just a crimpable connector, uh, so it won't be both going in one side, it'll be one in each side. But we'll get these together and we'll be uh, off to doing plumbing stuff instead of electrical. So now to put the gas line back through the hole to the outside so we can connect that. I'll just shove that through that hole and try to make sure that the seal stays intact. All right, now that we have the water heater in, wired up, we have the gas line connected. Gas is still turned off outside. Now it's time to turn to plumbing. Essentially, I'm rebuilding this. Uh, because these are all crimped on, 
and I can't get those off without destroying them. It's safest just to replace it all. So I'm starting from scratch, rebuilding that. Here's my exploded view of what I'm replacing. Instead of having a bypass valve here, I'm putting a T. And then uh, I'm going to put a shutoff valve at each inlet, inlet, outlet, actually it's the other way around, inlet, outlet, hot water comes out the top because heat rises. Anyway, so I'm going to have a shutoff valve at each spot. This will still allow uh, the water to come down and go back out through so there will always be pressure over here even if I shut off these two there and there. Water will still be able to flow. So you can bypass your water heater if you do it this way. So now I've got my PEX. Uh, I'm gonna replace so that everything's kind of still color-coded so that you can see what happens there and then get it all put back together. Let's act like a plumber. Oh and don't forget to use Teflon tape on your threaded fittings. So the nipple that goes into the water heater, use Teflon tape there on both ends of that. The other end goes into the valve. All of these fittings will be crimped so they'll be tight. Watertight, hopefully. And then we'll check for leaks. So a quick correction, when I was talking about the bypass valve, I was I almost put a T in in that spot. And I'll put a diagram on the screen right here that shows exactly how a bypass in an RV is supposed to be. So I had to go and get one more valve to put in that spot. That way, when the water heater is supposed to be on, you turn the bypass valve so that it's shut and that allows the water to go through the water heater. Um, when you open it and close the two valves that go into the water heater, one that goes in, one that comes out, that keeps antifreeze from going into your cooler, or <laughs> into the cooler. Keeps antifreeze from going into the water heater when you're winterizing. Uh, it just saves some flushing that has to take place before you can use it again. So be sure and use a proper uh, shutoff valve, bypass valve for an RV setup. Uh, follow the diagram on the screen and you'll be fine. So using PEX, you want to, after you cut the tube, you want to clean out all the burrs, and it, it's easy enough to do just with your fingernails. Uh, just kind of run your fingernail along the inside, and then try to get all the plastic out of the pipe because you don't want that going and clogging up your plumbing fixtures. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it makes it easier to put together. Just clean out all that stuff. So crimp pieces go on. And this is my last connection. And it is done as soon as I crimp them. Don't forget to crimp every single piece or you'll have a bad time. Oh, you got here just in time. This is the very last crimp and it's done. Boom! 
And that's how you replace a water heater. Yay. All those are cracked. Should be able to crank up our water. I want to hit the pump. Let's see what happens. Oh boy. We have water pressure. Yeah, oh yeah. You can hear water going into the water heater. It's filling that. Um, is that oh, hot? Is that hot water or cold water? Yeah, leave it on hot so it can. Oh, hold up! We got a leak. Turn it off. Turn it off. We've got a little puddle building right there. Probably didn't get one of my fittings crimped tight enough or something. Dang it. Okay, we got a big old puddle of water. So, disaster averted. Um, I was afraid that I had cracked one of the fittings because it's so tight down at the bottom. You can see I have a wrench wedged underneath the hot water heater, tilting it up and taking the pressure off of that, just in case that's what it was. But as I looked through here, I actually forgot to crimp that one right there. I put together 19 crimps total and I missed one. So don't be that guy, don't be me. Uh, double check all of those. But I mean, turning it on is your final check. Looking for any leaks. Uh, it took me a second to isolate which one it was. Uh, but you can tell that these have little marks on them. Well, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. But you can tell which ones are crimped because they have these little signature marks on them. And that one down there was just shiny new with no crimp mark on it. So that was my first clue. But I got it crimped and now we've water tested, pressure tested everything. It's actually under pressure right now. So now we just need to fill the water heater completely and test all of that out as well. Since installing the water heater, we've actually gone on a camping trip. We were three nights, four days. This particular trailer model has a switch for the hot water heater. And what you do is when you turn it on, if the red light stays on, then it hasn't lit yet. When the light goes off, I can actually hear the water heater firing up. You may or may not be able to hear that, but um, I don't have any water in there right now, so I don't want to leave that turned on. That is a safety feature with this particular trailer that we have. I appreciate you guys watching. This is Troy with DIY Home and Auto. If you like videos like this, uh, I work on my own stuff. I post videos about the things that I work on. Got several projects in the works. A 79 Ford F-250 that I'm in the process of restoring. I've got several other vehicles that I work on periodically and post videos about. So I appreciate you liking, subscribing, sharing, do all the things that helps me out. Appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in the next video.